Hello and thanks for joining me for some more landscape photography. Now in this video I'm going to be taking you over to the mainland for a short trip into the De Norwich Slate Quarry at Lamberis where I'm going to be doing a bit of work on my RPS project. Uh, but before that, as is becoming a bit of a tradition with these videos now, I just want to share with you a few images which I've put out on social media since my last video, in case you haven't seen them, and kind of give you a, an insight into what on earth I was thinking when I was making them. Now this little stand of snowdrops has been on my radar for the last seven years ever since we moved in here because I walk around the lake every day and I spot these snowdrops and every year I think oh all I need is some light and I seem to end up either with light before they've come out properly uh, or after they finished and they just never look in full bloom and this year it was absolutely perfect. I was carrying my EM5 uh, and I had my 14 to 150 kit lens attached to it which is my regular walking about camera. Uh, I had to get a long way back from these. I was probably shooting this from about 15 feet away because I really wanted to drop that background out of focus. There are some snowdrops in the background but I love the way this little stand really clumps together and I didn't want to distract from it. Uh, also what I really like about this is that little stinging nettle in the foreground just putting in an early appearance. But I'm really pleased with this shot and having waited for it for so long uh, it couldn't have turned out better. Now this one is from down near Beth Gellert on Llyn Gwynant. Early one morning some beautiful mist and some soft pastel light. It was just begging to be shot. Um, the thing about this shot was I really wanted to make sure that those intersections and the layers on the reflections weren't cut through by any of these stones. So I had to angle my camera really carefully to maintain all of that three-way separation on this one. Now this one was shot about a week ago. My friend Mark McNeil, excellent photographer, was down here and he called me up and said, come on, get down to the beach. It's terrible conditions, but we'll have some fun. And he was absolutely right. It was a howling gale, uh, but for photography purposes, absolutely perfect. I didn't stay long because I was really busy with work. So uh, I was really pleased to be able to make this image. Uh, Mark, I'll put a link to his stuff in the description, um, got some great images as well, well worth checking out. And that's it for the last four weeks, just three images. Um, I tend not to really bother with making an image unless the conditions and the subject material um, really inspire me or make me think, yeah, there could be something in this. I don't like churning out average images. Um, so they've really got to appeal to me. And if when I get home and I look at them on the computer and I have second thoughts about them, I don't bother processing them. I usually delete the raw files and go and do something else um, because I really only want to put out stuff that I, I'm genuinely pleased with. Now, let's head over into the mountains and see what I can manage to do on a bright sunny day. The last time I brought you here, we were right down the bottom in the rain down at Anglesey Barracks, uh, middle of last year, when the heather was in full bloom. I haven't brought you back since, but today I thought we'd spend a bit of time in the middle galleries. My next visit, probably right at the top end. But there's plenty to see around here, and with this nice, pale, watery uh, winter sunlight, uh, I'm hopeful it'll work quite well for the sort of stuff that I've got in mind for today. Mm -hmm. 
So there I was doing a piece to camera only to find out later that the audio was completely screwed up. What I was trying to explain to you was that I'd found an image shooting through this old building where the window on the far side gave out onto a fabulous view of Voilgorch and I, it looked like a picture on a wall. Now it's going to be a really challenging exposure and I'll explain a bit more about it later on when I show you the images. Uh, but suffice to say, really challenging, incredibly broad dynamic range and obviously an exposure blend. Now with this shot, I had to park you some way off and point you straight into the sun, so sorry about that. Not really here to make artistic movies. Um, but what I wanted was to get into position above this double winding house. Now this is a subject that I've seen shot many times and indeed I've actually shot it myself, but from down on the ramp looking back up towards it. Now that's okay but it's not that interesting. And also what it doesn't do is put it in the context of the landscape. By sort of wrangling myself into this position, what I've been able to do is to have the backdrop of the other uh, levels behind. In fact, there's another single winding house just over on that ridge. And then immediately behind me, I've got, uh, well, you can't actually see Snowdon Summit, but the main bulk of Snowdon, you can see the summit of Garnethigain and some quite interesting cloud, which I hadn't expected today. So I've been taking a series of shots at nine millimeters, standard exposure, F5.6, but a different set of shutter speed so that I've got some darker and some lighter. The deep shadows along these drums with the coils of wire over them are gonna be a real problem while I'm dealing with such a bright sky. I've got a 0.9 soft grad filter on to try and mitigate that a little bit, but there's still going to be a fair bit of work in post to blend these together in a convincing manner. And I'm really enjoying that light and the cloud shapes right above the mountain. So I think what I'm going to do now is put a long lens on and just see if I can do a tight shot of the summit. So I've sort of contorted myself into another ludicrous position with a tripod extremely precarious. Um, I took the long telephoto shot with um, my 40 to 150, but I also put my 1.4 teleconverter on as well, getting some absolutely beautiful shapes from the clouds. As, as the air mass gets pushed up over the summit, they sort of condense out, even though the rest of the sky is completely clear. It's quite a common occurrence in the mountains, so I thought I'd take advantage of that. When I kind of squeezed myself into this position then, I noticed I had quite a good angle on the single winding house over on the far ridge. Also, there's one little bush on the spoil heap, which um, I think might be the bush that I shot a couple of autumns ago from lower down looking up at it. But it's catching the light and it's sitting on this sort of diagonal slab of spoil, which is pretty much solid black. 
But what I've done is I've got a bit of this winding drum as my foreground. I've set up one of my front buttons here as a depth of field preview because I want to drop this foreground out of focus, but not too much. Um, this is an f2.8 lens, and if I open it right up, I don't know what I'm shooting at here. That's 60 millimeters. It's far too soft, you can't make out what it is. So I've been experimenting with my aperture. Um, closing it down to about f5, it's just dropping the foreground out enough so you can tell what it is. There's a bit of texture there, um, but then I've got the winding house on the far uh, gallery ridge over the other side of this open valley in sharp focus. Now my backdrop to that is the flank of Klechog uh, Ridge as it runs up towards the summit. But because of the way the light is falling at the moment, it's almost like a solid studio backdrop, a dark grey backdrop. So there's really no detail visible in it at all. And because the edges of that little winding house are just catching a bit of light, it's, it's jumping out from the background. Um, and really what I'm trying to do with this is to kind of bring the context together that these winding houses that were dotted around all over the quarry used to bring the slate down to the processing sheds at the bottom and it was a sort of double system so you'd have a, an empty one coming back up as a full one was going down. Um, and they've, they've done well to last this long in such a harsh environment. And I, you know, I'm willing to bet they really won't be here for that much longer. So um, I, I just felt that to, to try and do something a little unusual with it would be a better use of my time today than the usual sort of, oh, you could just stand around and point your camera at it. Yes, you get a shot of it. Um, but what I wanted was to say, here's this piece of architecture, this piece of industrial heritage, and this is the landscape that it's helped to create. So that sounds like a right load of old toot, doesn't it? But it's, it's what I'm trying to achieve with this particular set of photographs. And I think I'm pretty much done for today. I've actually spent the last probably hour and a half just on this mucking about, trying different compositions. Um, it's, it's one of the things that I really enjoy about this sort of photography is really not getting too bogged down and getting loads of images. You know, it's been said that you could spend days and days in this quarry and still not get to shoot everything. Well, that's true, sort of. But there's also a lot of photography I see from around here that is a bit sort of holiday snap. Look, there, there's a great big quarry. Let's just take a snap of it. I think people perhaps sometimes don't give this the uh, the attention it deserves to really make the most of the photography. My friend Jason Jones spends a lot of time in here and that shows in his photography uh, because he knows the nuances of the place and he knows where the good photographs are to be had depending on what the conditions are doing. And of course, he lives about two miles that way, so he can pop in any time. Uh, but if you get a chance to visit, it's really well worth it. But give yourself plenty of time. Try not to be overawed by it. Find an image and work it and try and get something that really stands out from the crowd if you can. I really enjoyed myself on that day out, even though I only came home with four images, which I'll show you shortly. But I think the thing is that despite the uh, obviously bright light, it was still quite diffuse. And at this time of year, you can really make use of it. Don't be frightened of blue skies. All you have to do is adapt your photography and use the light that you're getting to highlight the things you really want to highlight. Um, it's difficult, it's challenging, but it can be extremely rewarding. So with this first shot, uh, I'm using just two of my raw files and it's a really quite a simple uh, exposure blend. I'm using the darker image so that you can see the mountains through that window, which 
on the video you can't see at all. It's completely blown out by my crummy video work. Um, and also the highlights on those pieces of slate in the foreground had to be toned down as well. But I think even though it was quite challenging, overall the blend isn't too bad. And of course, there was a focus stack in that as well, because I'd focused on the foreground rock for the one exposure and on the mountains through the window for the other exposure. Now the next one, again, a simple exposure blend using luminosity masks, which I explained in detail in an earlier video, and I'll link to that. So if you didn't catch it and you're interested in learning how to use them, and don't be fooled, they are really easy to use. And as hopefully you'll see when I show you the finished image, um, it really can help with your photography. So the, the main winding house image, I was able to blend it pretty effectively. And one thing that you couldn't see on the video was that there was some fabulous cloud in the sky. It was all blown out on the video. Um, but I was able to, to make something of that in the image and I really think it adds to it. So I'm going to leave it there for this one. Thank you ever so much for joining me. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, why not subscribe now? Join me next time. Cheers.